Yes, yes, yo, you don't stop, Big John. Coming rocking the short shot. Welcome back to the Underdog MLB Pick Show here at Mayo Media Net with your host, the Big Man. Call him the Big Mouth. What's going on? A couple of the troublemakers already waiting outside the principal's office. I appreciate you. Jeff L., Eric Andre, David Pickett, Big John. What the hell is Eric Andre, Big John, and Don. Love it. Yes, yes, y'all. Everybody grab your spear, grab your shield, but you are part of the failings here at baseball's version of 300. Give the book nothing. Take from them everything. The Big Man made his ESPN debut today. Look at that, Lee. Adrian, we did it. <laughs> Who would have dunk it? ESPN Radio Vegas will never be the same. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe because that shit matters way more than it should. Sign up to Underdog. Use the promo code MMN. Look at that. First shot. Promo code lets them know Big Gianni sent you. Again, if you want this show on when the weather gets warm, that's the best way to do it. Thank you, mi gente, warming my heart. Coming off a nice win yesterday. Hopefully we had a couple of tailors. Not the type that's so. Oh, it didn't even know it. Wow. Love that free leg. Good time to get fortunate. Though I'm really hoping we're going to kind of get into the groove. I know my man Jeff L. always has an eye on the pitching props. I think that's the best place for value. Underdog has a great pitching prop menu. We have exposure to some good data. And I think that's where the best pricing is when we're comparing to the general market. If you go and look at some of these that you're getting at whatever they have, maybe like a minus 122 or minus 125 when you because they use a different scoring system. But that's what it comes down to, opposed to what would be like minus 160. So a lot of these pitching props, you're starting with some CLV, but of course you have to package them, right? We're going to pick a pack of player props. So that's six times fast. All right, let's do it. Press the cartoon finger, matters more than it should. Press the cartoon bell, matters more than it should. Stick your cartoon finger right up inside me. What? If we're going to go down, let's go down swinging, people. Whoa! It's Matty Williams, my boy. I swear, Matt, I never go a day without mentioning your name. Your ears must constantly be ringing. Make sure you follow my boy, Matty, where volume builds character. Matt, one of the true Gs up in the space. He and I always kind of brainstorming. We would love to get his eyeballs on these player props. Matt has a particularly strong, keen sense, I should say. For player props, Maddie, wait to, if you dig in, you you have such a good feel for the pricing. This is what I was just speaking about, whatever it is. Underdog, because they make you pair, you get a little bit of pricing comfort with the pitching props if you're familiar with the pricing, right? It's not universal. But if you know what you're looking for, I have a couple that I know you and I are on together. Let's just get right into the thing that we do. Thanks again to Pat Mayo and Underdog. Again, this is the streamlined version. If you'd like the more spaghetti against the wall stuff where we, I cover every game, you can get that in the morning. Follow me on Twitter at John Lugaza. Flow. Sharpen and a razor. All right, first one. It's one of the 640 games. Let's get in and out of this one, everyone. Get these bets in. It's the Sheriff Chris Paddock on the bump for the Twins against the Blackbirds in Orange Vest and Mr. Grayson Rodriguez. I mean, Paddock, there's really not much of a sample to go on, right? I think we got, we're up to eight and two thirds this year. I think, yeah, he had another five or so last year. So you, if you want to use the 13 and two thirds sample, we can. Four, six, one ERA to one, six, eight whip at the OPS up near 900. All the indicators, probably 4.3 or worse. And this year it's, they're even worse. They're five or worse. I don't know. It's just not. He's not really the same guy since the injury and coming back. You know, swing and strike at 11, CSW at 27, really not that impressive. The ball rate up at 37. First strike rate down at 53. Not enough chases, too much contact in the zone. So Paddock's really, I don't know, they're trying to make him into a finesse guy, and I don't know if it's really working. The main thing I see here is he's really struggled against lefties, and that is just the worst. That is the worst trait for your starting pitcher when you're facing these Orioles. The lineup is out. You're getting lefties, the first the first six, and seven of the first eight. They're going to go Gunner, Rutschman, O'Hearn, Santander, Mullins, and Kowser to Westburg, then Holiday. Again, just the 13 and two thirds, but he's gotten just demolished. 
333 batting average against Southpaws. They have a 1048 OPS, more than four homers per nine. Uh, probably going to be a long, long day to OK Corral for Paddock. His prop is set at 15 and a half outs. Matt says low whiff rate, high bow rate. What could go wrong? I don't know, especially against the Orioles, who are just like amazing. So that's where we're going. I was surprised to see this out prop. Let's get it. We don't bury the lead here. We just get it right into it. We know people are on the move. Bury the tease. I'm not going to say it out loud, but the video people could see it. So the first one, Chris Paddock, 15 and a half outs. We're going l -l 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 lower. So the last time Chris Paddock is a good one. So the last time Chris Paddock went 15 and a half outs was actually on May 2nd of 2022. <laughs> Goodness. It's it's been a while. So yeah, two games this year. He went four, gave up two, and four and two thirds gave up two through 82 and 87 pitches, respectively. Again, I mentioned the numbers against lefties, the underpinning stuff just as bad. Lefties have a 312 expected batting average, 500 expected slug. So he really doesn't have much of an answer for lefties, and he's going to get seven in a row out of the box. I mean, it could get ugly fast. Orioles, one of the better right-hand hitting teams in the league. And if you're into all the data and stuff, I provide all this stuff. 780 team OPS versus righties, a 211 ISO. Those are both top three. They put the ball in the air, and then it's top three across the board as far as power goes. 46 hard hit, double-digit barrel, 334 wall, but 332 expected. Remember, the X is always going to be a little bit lower. That's really good. That's probably top five expected Wilbur versus righties. There's a really good chance that Paddock gets smoked. There's also a decent chance that he kind of escapes, you know, with his bootstraps intact. I think if he gets through five against this team and is somehow at, right, because they're capping him in the mid-80s, and he's somehow at 60 pitches, they may even just call it a day and say, well, let's just get out of here with our arse intact. So I really like these. Matt, again, was one of the ones that put me on to the going under 15 and a half where you don't need to kill him. I mean, listen, any outcome where he gets killed is wonderful. But you don't really need to kill him. You just need him to get to 80 pitches or give up a couple runs, and that'll probably do it through five. So that's the first play. Again, let's keep the streak going. We nailed it yesterday. We had the freebie on Otani. And then over Sonny Gray strikeouts, I think Matty was on that too, against the A's. And I think we had an under walk. Somebody didn't walk anybody. Might have been Power Ranger Suarez not worked anybody. Or whoever went for the raise yesterday. And anyway. oh, Eflin, right? Was it Eflin Savalis today? Okay, let's get back into the second one. But before we do, just a quick word from our sponsor who happens to look a lot like me. Remember when you sign up to Underdog, the first hundred bucks is free. If it's free, it's for me. Use the promo code MMN, Mayo Media Net, when you sign up to let them know Big Johnny sent you. Because if you want the show on when the weather is still warm, that is probably the best avenue to get there. All right, one more prop play, then I'll take any questions. And, and unfortunately, I wish I wish we were able to do the daily specials. That would be the most fun. I mentioned the ESPN spot I did today. Ooh, look at me. But they actually brought up my tweets about the highest implied total and how we could use it for the high-scoring team. If anyone's unfamiliar, again, check me out on Twitter. I put it out there. Two nights ago, we hit the Reds, 17-1 to highest-scoring team. Yesterday, we had the Braves at 15-1. to You know, they had the winning run at the plate. It was right there. I actually was telling the story this morning. Bases were loaded. I think it was Michael Harris. And I, I couldn't watch live. I had the blipper on the tracker, and I got the, the – the blue in play runs. In play runs. In play runs. In play runs. <laughs> it wasn't. It was a sacrifice. And I think they fell one short. Well, we need, actually we technically needed two. But the idea being these implied team totals was something I was already doing. So to not have to adjust your work to the game, to have the book bring the game to you, I really think we have a leg up on that. All right, let's do the second prop today. Who do we got? Spin the wheel. And the winner is... 
Why can't I find it? Oh boy, I am on a struggle boss. And it's Logan Gilbert, that's right. Whoever saw it, I probably got a hint from the crowd. Going, you already showed up, stupid. Yes, yeah, Logan Gilbert. So I was I had a play today. It was actually funny. It was the player gave out on the radio that got taken down, which is kind of a pain in the butt sometimes. You do the analysis, right? I, and for this show, I have a couple notes trying to have all my stuff going on. Get ready to launch to see it go gray. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Underdog. Hopefully you are. Sign up. Use the code MMN. But when it go gray, it come, it's come down. So I don't know if too many people hit it. It was the Jared Jones walk prop. His control has just been unbelievable. And again, he has that kind of a workload thing still going on because of the age. They're not going to want to totally blow his arm out. Mets are also aggressive in the zone, so I like that one. It came down. If it were to pop back up, I'm actually going to scan really quick. You know, you could jump on it. These things do kind of reappear at times. No, it looks like the walk stuff is down. So let's get into Gilbert. I mean, you really can't go wrong. Anytime my boy Logan Gilbert on the mound, walk props should be part of the consideration. I mean, his control and command are just outlandish. Let's go back 211 innings for Mr. Gilbert. It's a 4.5% walk rate, but really fully validated by that ball rate at 331 Again, if you follow my work at all, it's one of the things I hope really sticks, especially if you're in the pitching prop game. But really, any kind of pitcher analysis, ball rate is way, way better indicator than walk rate. Use ball percentage. Again, I always provide that stuff. You don't have to just go to me, fan grass, whatever. Nice to see the two of them to have an idea where regression might go. Another one at the top of my head. Quintana going for the Mets tonight. His ball rate is through the roof and the walk rate hasn't really come up. That's kind of been the case for him since showing up with the Mets last year. I think he's going to walk three guys. That one was plus money also. Well, let's get back into Gilbert. The control is really just amazing. His entire disciplinary basket is very good. Right, so he's 64% first strike. He's getting ahead. He limits fouls. He induces chases. Everything that we want to see. He actually gives up just enough contact, which, which we don't mind either, right? We want some swing and miss. We want him to win. We want our pitcher to win in the 1v1. But we're not doing too much, right? Too many swings and misses. Sometimes our pitchers that the pitchers are too good, right? And they end up out of the zone. So we if we don't want walks, we want a little bit of contact. Again, nothing wrong with that. Just how to put the right piece on the right board. So give me Gilbert one and a half walks lower. I had a couple notes on him also. He has a career 516 innings to that same five and a half percent walk rate. So you know this is legitimate. Then this year, 20 and a third. Three total walks, went seven, walked one. Went five and a third, walked one. Went seven and two-thirds, walked one. Then you pop over to the opposition, the Reds, who, I mean, I, I really hate knocking the Reds because they're like, my, I don't know if people know, like, they're my, that's my National League team. I I was a, the biggest Luis Castillo fan ever when he was with the Reds. They were also, like, kind of lovable losers. They really kind of stunk. At the time, they brought in uh, Bauer. It was there with them, and it, I – like them to kind of make some noise. It obviously didn't happen. They kind of sold off. Now they're exciting again. But they're like young and exciting and like a little like a little wild. All right, check it out. The disciplinary basket is pretty rough. So, you know, some people just use the surface or composite stats. Again, you know, they're they're like top five in doubles and steals. You know, they're the ISO is good. The OPS is okay. But the average is 244, which, again, is probably right around average against righties. But the OBP is down around 306 because the strikeout rate is at 27% to only 8% walk. 13 swing and strike. Bottom eight chase, bottom eight zone contact. So, again, this is, this is another kind of hat tip to Maddie. I remember asking him specifically how to improve the hitter tools. And that was the first thing he said, to make it more readily accessible to, to, for split data. Right in the this specter of, of betting, right? Prop betting individualized pitchers. Obviously, you want split data. Right. It can get a little bit different when you get into bullpens and you have to incorporate other stuff. That can happen with the other strikeouts. If you have a hitter who never strikes out against lefties, okay. Well, he's gonna face righties at the end. Very likely. So when you're 
taking out the variables, right? As you remove variables, you should be adjusting data sets. So, you know, I have to tip to my boys always, but that really goes for certain where you need to be splitting data because we only care about the stuff against Gilbert, right? We don't care what happens afterwards. It's not that the Reds won't walk or that Team X won't walk because if they, Gilbert won't allow those walks. So the Reds discipline is so, so poor. Uh, let me bring it back up one more time. We got a plus 129 on the two pack pick up, pack up player problems. What's your boy? So, right, Chris Paddock, 15 and a half, half outs. We want to go lower. He's really struggled. He's in particular struggled against lefties. Orioles have seven lefties to start the game. He hasn't gone five innings since 2022. And if he does go five innings, I think it might be considered a success. Look for a relatively quick hook from the Twinkies on the Sheriff. And then over to Logan Gilbert, Mr. Control, 5% walk rate through over 500 innings against a very young and wild, undisciplined Reds offense. That will do it for the pick and part of the show. I was trying to add a little something, something. I don't know if anyone has a question or a favorite play. The Jared Jones walk thing was one of my favorite plays. I guess I don't mind going free with my DDP little poet, and I didn't know it. My man Jeff says, also loving the Substack data and podcast from me, John. Thank you so much. We really do appreciate it. Make sure everybody rate, review, and subscribe, because that stuff matters more than it should. If you're not subscribed, make sure to follow all my work. Thank you so very, very much. Yeah, no one, you know, I'm one of the very few that kind of bring it like this. I actually think in order to be really good at MLB, you almost need to be fully submerged, right? Really kind of immerse yourself all the time, right? You, Matt's always up. I'm always up. We're always up. We're always working on We're always thinking about it. You're always checking lines and all of these things. So I don't have a home run call. Stug was asking, although I'm actually lying. Am I lying to him? Yeah, I'm lying to him. I had Cas Tristan Casas pop up. A few names kind of popped up today. Yeah, I think I have Tristan Casas. If I had to go for a bomb, it could be Tristan Casas. My daily ML parlay, just to show you, right? I'm not hiding anything. I want everybody to eat. I got a plus 475. I got my favorite money line favorites. Put them together. Baltimore, Philly, KC, and St. Louis. Right? So we're going to go Grayson Rodriguez, Ranger Suarez, Brady Singer, and Lance Lynn all in. Really kind of nice matchups. Those are all the, you know, all the slam dunk. Careful, I did air quotes. I don't want to put the horns on. Those are our slam dunk wins right there. Again, I run the Algo, public facing Algo for a few years. We've been profitable every year. Thank goodness. Knock on something hollow. And this is my way of using the numbers to get exposure to the games that I think are going to come home without having to pay minus 175. Look at yesterday. You know, if you paid minus 345 for the Dodgers, you got at least one thump right in your eyeball. You know, and it takes a long time to recover. We never want to find ourselves beyond the eight ball. We never want to find ourselves tilted or overlevered. The best way to do it, for me at least, right? It's not the only way. I also play other stuff. I have a daily lot of risk. It's very important to me to stay within myself. So this is how I like to get exposed to those games. And you know what? If we go south, you didn't have to bet, you know, let's say the 170. You didn't have to go 1.7 to win one. So you didn't have to go 6.8 to win four. You just bet a quarter of a unit to go times plus 475, which is what this is. So one last time, it was all money lines, Baltimore, Philly, KC, St. Louis, just for a little bit of something, something. One last look before we get out of here at our two-pack pick and plays. Plus 129, it's Paddock, 15 and a half outs a lower against the Orioles, and Gilbert, one and a half walks allowed to the Reds lower. That will do it. Dave Pickett, really appreciate you, man. Jones and plus money under his walks prop on different sites. If it's out there, I would. Sar Marsh it. Big John, do these pitcher injuries change any way you look at the data? No, uh, no. If they're healthy, let them roll. And until you start seeing velo dips within the game, which, again, you know, it'll be like a for people like me that actually have access to this stuff, very difficult for the public to get their hands on this, you know. 
90th percentile velocities and ranges of, you know, between the average, the mean, the max, and the min. Again, that was not to spin off the rails. That that was that's really the data point with elbow injuries that's been proven. I've done some other hypothesizing myself. I don't like to confuse the two. But what the math has been saying is if your average velocity is within two miles of your max velocity, it means you're throwing too hard too often. And you need to be further away from your max more and just tap into that when you need it. Justin Verland is probably the best example of that. He would throw 93 in the first and 94 in the fifth. And then if he needed it, he'll go back and get 97 maybe three or four times during a game, not coming out trying to throw 99 in the first inning. So if we end up finding that there's something to do with the velocity bands, averages, and longevity, that would probably be a bit. But as far as it goes for us, especially in the betting world, if they're healthy, roll them out there. We don't care, man. Assume that they're assume they're healthy. You know, I can't bet for players to get hurt in game. It's just whatever. And if our guy gets hurt before he takes the man, then you know you get your money back anyway. So that will do it. Thank you so much for picking up what we're putting down. So for Dave Pickett, Jeff L, Maddie Williams, all my people, Eric Andre, man, mean the world to you. To me. You mean the world to me. Hopefully I mean the world to you. I just might be spending your lineup block show crossing your T's and dotting your I's here with us at Mayo Media Net. Make sure you rate, review, and subscribe because it matters way more than it should. Way more than it should. Press the cartoon finger, press the cartoon bell, matters more than it should. I need a more than it should button. More than it should. You need like a symbol, you know. Take third. Matters more than it should. That'll do it. Sign up for underdog. First hundred bucks is free. If it's free, it's for me. Use the code MMN. Keep us going. Really do appreciate you. We will check you tomorrow. Same bad time, same bad channel. Hopefully we're staying in the winner circle again. That was a really nice hit yesterday. I would love to keep this going, leaning on projections as they get stronger into this game. Hopefully, you know, really kind of build a nice little bankroll for everybody to make our way through the 2024 MLB season. And that's it. Very last lesson, as always, remember, when you work this hard, it feels a lot less like luck, doesn't it? Absolutely.